Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. We're continuing our investigation of this microwave sensor. So first things first, we're going to need to solder on a pin header so we can start using a bit of breadboard. And I have to admit, in recent years, I've taken to breadboarding. I don't really, really use to breadboard anything, but now we've got so many of these little gadgets. If you don't breadboard them, you might not be able to ever integrate them. So I did go on the internet and had a little check about this. It does take a five volt power supply. In fact, it has a multi-voltage input up to quite a large voltage range. Just check out the data sheet. And it outputs 3V3, so that could be useful, couldn't it? If you've got some additional sensors and things that need that voltage, or maybe a microcontroller, this board could actually be the power supply for it. But if you look at the board, you notice there's not too much on there. So that chip would have to be doing all the regulation internally, interestingly enough. So I've got one of these doodads, a bit of breadboard with all the wires and the power supply. I've currently got it set to 3V3 on this rail and 5 volts on this rail, so we'll hook this up. I'm going to hook it up hanging over the edge. Because this is a microwave detector, if you've got it bouncing off bits of metal and things, it could give you all sorts of weird readings. So we're going to put that there. And then we're going to hook up the power supply rails. So just looking at the chip here, the second pin in here is the VDS we're going to use. Use this blue wire. So you can see that right there, just at that second pin on V in, and then I'm going to put it on the power rail here. Next pin along is the out, and then we have ground. So we have the ground, let's hook that up there. And we have an output pin. So I think if I have a quick look, I can find a transistor. We can hook up a transistor so we can flash an LED. LED is hooked up. I don't know if you can see that. We'll zoom in. There you go. And the LED is on while the module is not detecting. So I have been waving my hands around like a madman trying to figure out how to set this off and how it, it works. And it seems that the actual detection window is on this side. So that's the side that needs to point out towards your, your objects. So we need to adjust this slightly so we can test it. So I'm going to bend this LED upwards. And I'm going to turn the board this way so we're edge on. And you can just about see the little LED there if I bend it thusly. So you can see now as I move around in front of it, after a few goes, it did knock the LED off. However, if I go around to the other side, it seems to be a lot more sensitive. It does have, it appears to be a 1-1000, 2-1000, 3 1000, like a 2-3 two, two, second re-trigger. So, that's fine. So let's assume it's detecting in a cone like that, but possibly a cone like that, like an hourglass shape. What we can do is we can take these pieces of Super Nintendo and make some sort of waveguide. So if we put a shield behind it, and again, you'd have to be careful how close behind it you can go, because if you go really close, you might end up nobbling it and it won't work as well. So at this, if I actually go behind, <coughs> I'm moving around. <laughs> See, I kind of moved around here too. Nothing's going on. Yeah, nothing is going on. However, if I do a little reach around to the front, it's gone off right away. So that is the beginnings then of your microwave detector waveguide uh, radar. So if you want to make this more sensitive into a particular direction, I would think you could get a baked bean tin, maybe a Pringles tin. I don't know if it's, you know, solid enough. Because these are technically microwaves, aren't they? Or microwave band. Um, so I'd imagine there'd be a tube here and then you could direct your movement at the end of the tube. Or you could leave it open like this as a general detector. You could just hang it up, I'd say vertically pointing outwards. 
Um, and then you could hook that up to your Arduino or something, and then whenever it's detecting, you can just update a log and let you know when someone was last detected in that area. Now, if you use these, there you go, you can see it's, it's working away. If you use these, though, for um, home alarm systems, you'll be a bit careful because, of course, they do work through walls. So, technically, although this has got Arduinos in it, so it might not quite work. In fact, yeah. Um, technically, depending on the, the build of your, your property, it should work definitely through walls plaster those sorts of materials. I'm just, I'm just eagerly looking around here to see if I've got anything that might uh, act as that but probably not. There's probably too much metal work. But I'll put this corner of this Super Nintendo cartridge should be pretty good. Let's see if it's still... yeah I don't know. It's... Oh yeah <laughs> I'm such a moron. What I'm gonna do is let this, this, this reset itself and I'll just move my hand underneath the bench so there, underneath the bench, it, it goes off. So yeah, so you have to be careful. Um, so you don't get false positives if you're using it as a kind of alarm. To say, remember, someone moving around in a room next to you will set it off. So again, coupled with a PIR. And if you like that idea there, so you can use it as a night-operated thing. That's the, uh, the footprint where you can actually fit your light sensor. And these pads here deal with all of the re-triggering time and all those things. So all in all, a nice little board for uh, three for seven pounds. Definitely be trying to integrate that in the future. Hope that's of some use to you. Please let me know down below if you're going to do anything with this board. And as ever, thank you for watching.